All right, today's notes are on inverse functions. Go ahead and print out the blank ones. It'll save you some time. You won't have to draw all these pictures. They're already drawn for you. The inverse of a point AB is BA and is symmetric with the line Y equals X. So an example, the inverse of 3, negative 5 is negative 5, 3. You just switch the X and Y. That's it. That's the inverse. So if you're given a, a set of ordered pairs, find the inverse of the following. Here you have a set of ordered pairs. The inverse of that function would just be switching the X and Y. So the inverse of 1, 2 is 2, 1. The inverse of negative 3, 4 is 4, negative 3. And the inverse of 5, 0 is 0, 5. Right, so I already drew the points, the original points over here on the graph. The inverses, 2, 1, is right here. The inverse of negative 3, 4 is 4, negative 3, right here, right 4, down 3. And the inverse of 5, 0 is 0, 5. And you'll notice that each point is a reflection across this line y equals x. There's the line y equals x. See how that's just reflected across there. These two are reflected across the line and so are these two. That's inverses. Alright, so given a set of ordered pairs you can find the inverse. And the same thing here, I'm given some ordered pairs and I'm going to go ahead and write the original ones down here. This one is 2, 0. And this one over here is negative 1, negative 2. And the last one is 1, 3. So their inverses, you can just switch the x and y. The inverse of 2, 0 is 0, 2. The inverse of negative 1, negative 2 is negative 2, negative 1. And the inverse of 1, 3 is 3, 1. So we graph those. 0, 2 is right here. Notice it's just a reflection of that point. Negative 2, negative 1 is right here. Reflection of that point. And then 3, 1 right here. So these two are reflected across that line y equals x. It's that simple. All right, so given a set of ordered pairs, also known as a relation, we can find the inverses given the, the graphs on the coordinate plane, or at least the points on there, we can find their inverses and graph them. Given a line, well, a line between any two points is a straight line. So if I find two points on here, here's a point right here, 1, 1, and here's a point here, 0, negative 1, their inverses, and just switch them. So the inverse of 1, 1 is still 1, 1. And the inverse of 0, negative 1 is negative 1, 0. The inverse of a line is a line. So here, they have that same exact point there. But negative 1, 0 is over here. And now I'm going to use a ruler to draw a line, because the inverse of a line is a line. And I just draw that. And there's the inverse. Now let me show you on this one the inverse notation. Inverse notation looks like this. F has a negative 1 exponent, but it's read as F inverse. That's the inverse of this line F of x. If it's a line, all you need is two points. This is not a line, so I'm going to need more than two points. So here's the point 0, negative 2. Here's a point here, negative 1, negative 1. Here's a point right here, 1, negative 1. And let's see it. I'm sorry, I moved that over. Let's see if that's enough. So negative 2, 0 is the inverse of 0, negative 2. This point is exactly the same. And this one would be negative 1, 1. So negative 2, 0 is over here. Negative 1, negative 1, same exact point. Negative 1, positive 1. 
up there. And I think I have enough. Although here you see two, two, so that's gonna be the exact same point. So this one's gonna go like this. The original one is what we call a parabola. This f of x is a parabola. This inverse is a sideways parabola. It's not a function, but we'll get into that in some other lesson. So when you're given a picture of a graph, just find some points. If it's a line, all you need is two. If it's not a line, I need three. Three worked. That was enough. And then the last type is if you're given an equation. How do you find the inverse of an equation? There's three steps, very important. Number one, switch the x and y. Number two, solve for y. And number three, write it in f of f inverse notation. So switch the x and y. Well, here, number four, here's my x. f of x is the same thing as y. So let me just rewrite this first. Then it says, step one, switch the x and y. So the y becomes an x, and the x becomes a y. Just like we did on this example here. This x became the y, and this y became the x. It's finding an inverse. All right, so step two, solve for y, which means I just want to get the y by itself. So I am going to do, I'm going to add, which is the inverse of subtraction. So I'm also going to rewrite the y on the left side. I like the variable I'm solving for to be on the left. That doesn't change anything, x plus 4. And then I'm going to divide everything by 3 because multiplying, dividing is the inverse of multiplication. Now I'm going to write this as 1 third x just so I can tell what the slope is. This is in slope intercept form. And then the last step says write in this notation. So that's instead of the y, just write f inverse of x equals one-third x plus four-thirds. All right, on the second page, we've got some more examples. So these are the only ones that really involve any work. Switch the x and y, solve for y. So this becomes my x, the x becomes my y. The inverse of adding three is subtracting three. So x minus 3 equals 1 half y. I'm going to go ahead and just switch these sides. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Now when you do it on the right, everything over here is multiplied by 2. So this would give me y equals 2x minus 6. And the inverse notation f inverse of x equals 2x minus 6. Now, those of you who remember your algebra, this is a line. 1 half is the slope. 3 is the y-intercept. And on the problem on the other side, I showed you that if it's a line, its inverse is also a line. So this is a line 2. This one is not a line. This is quadratic. But the steps don't change. Switch the x and y. solve for y. And when we solve for a variable, we're, all we're doing is the inverse. The inverse of plus 3 is minus 3. Well, if I subtract 3 on this side, it goes away. Subtract 3 on this side, it would be x minus 3. This 2 is not being squared. It's, it's just the coefficient of the y. So to eliminate it, I'm going to divide by 2. So x divided by 2 is the same thing as 1 half x. 3 divided by 2 would be 3 halves. I could, have, I could have just written this as one fraction. It's not linear. So x minus 3 all over 2. They're the same thing. All right, then the inverse of squaring something is square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So it would be y equals the square root of 1 half x minus 3 over 2, or I could have written the square root over that thing. And then my inverse notation, f inverse of x, 
equals the square root of 1 half x minus 3 halves. Okay, so with that square, that's another thing we can do. Now we have a square root and we have a cube root, so let's see what we can do on here. The notes again, switch the x and y. f of x is your y. Switch the x and y, solve for y. Now, because this 4 is under the radical, I have to get rid of the radical first. And the inverse of square root is square. So here I get x squared, and then when you square square root, they cancel each other out. So now all I have to do is subtract 4 from both sides. Subtract 4 from here, it crosses out. x squared minus 4 over here. That's done. f inverse of x equals x squared minus 4. And the last one, very similar problem, except this is a cubed root. This was a square root. But I don't change the way I do this. Switch the x and y. Solve for y. And to eliminate a cubed root, we do the inverse, which is cubing it. So it would be x cubed, and these two will cancel each other out. Any time this number, which is known as the index, matches this number, they cancel each other out. So that would just be y plus 7. So now I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. I'm going to just switch sides here. Minus 7, that goes away. The y is by itself. Minus 7. And the last thing to do would be to write it in inverse notation. And this problem is done. Hopefully that helps you get through your homework. Keep those notes. Use those notes during your homework. That will help. Bye. Good luck.